I'm one of the teaching assistants with uh, Steve Schwartz in the LSAT Unplugged program. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to do a brief little introduction of who you are, Ms. Christine, and then uh, jump into a little conversation with you, if that's all right. That sounds great. Let's do it. So guys, for those who will be viewing with us, whether here today or uh, joining us afterwards on one of the video chats, hello to you and welcome to your law school journey. Uh, I'm Michelle Montgomery. As I said earlier, I'm here with the LSAT Unplugged team, one of your teaching assistants. And uh, we have the wonderful Miss Christine Carr here with us today. Uh, she is, uh, I'm gonna give you a cool a cool little bio that I wrote for, <laughs> and got for, for her. Uh, so Christine is the uh, one of the former associate directors of admissions at Boston. Boston University uh, School of Law. and nine years at BU Law, she read over 10,000 personal statements, guys, counseled thousands of prospective applicants through the application process, managed the operations of a highly selective law school. Uh, believing that law school application should launch your legal career, she knows what makes a successful law school application and looks forward to helping you gain admission to top law programs across the country. I got to give you your props here, Christine. She earned her eight College, master's in education from Suffolk University, Boston, and uh, MSW from Boston University. Is that all? All of that, and then some, I believe. Just that. That was plenty. <laughs> 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 all of that and then uh, some more, but that is great. We are so happy to have you here. Um, I'm going to jump right in and um, I just read a small bit right about about you, but if you will, I want to open the floor up with the opportunity for you to further introduce yourself and give a little bit more background into your previous position and then what you're doing now. Sure, sure. So, um, so I, before coming to BU Law, I've been working in college admissions and um, you know, I'm an undergraduate, and then also I was doing some MBA admissions. So um, I luckily um, had the opportunity to join the VU Law admissions team. Um, and law school admissions is, um, you know, it's it's amazing. It's it's offers so many opportunities to prospective students um, and you know prospective lawyers. It's um, you know, it's it's just a really great learning experience. There's so many things that you can do with a law degree that isn't just like, you know, either being in a courtroom or being in a like a conference room and, you know, pushing papers like you're, yeah, you're change makers. And so to work with, with um, you know, prospective law school students and hear about their journeys and why they're going to law school, it was just, it was a great experience and, and part of what I really enjoyed about my time there. And so what I'm doing now is, um, well, one, I'm psyched that I'm working for an organization um, known as Accepted. It is a, um, a company that's based in LA. I'm based still in Boston. I'm still um, Boston born and bred. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and so I work um, with some really great colleagues at Accepted and I'm on the law school um, admissions team. And so I'm still able to tap into that, the love of that and kind of still getting that energy and that vibe from the applicants. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, and then I'm also, I while at BU, um, what I did see um, while working in um, law school admissions and admissions in general is just the barriers to education, right? And so, yeah, you know, yeah. And, yeah, like as a gatekeeper, um, right. you know, in an in admissions office, I saw, you know, the struggle, I, I saw it firsthand. And so I, um, like my, all the applicants that I was reading, like I wanted to be a change maker too, right? So I took some classes at BU and the social work program, loved it. And, um, and so now what I'm doing is I'm actually a school social worker. Um, and so I'm working with middle school kids, high school kids, um, and then I'm also doing the accepted stuff. So I'm like following people wow. on their journey and you know, oh, I'm, you know trying, to, um, trying to help where I can and counsel where I can. Yeah, you're you're everywhere. <laughs> you are everywhere. I, I love it though. I love it. Like I, I believe like you stayed in this helping mindset though, right? Even after leaving uh the admissions kind of world, if you will, and but still dabbling into it, right? Like couldn't get enough of helping us get into law school. <laughs> so I'm gonna still do that and do some more. You know, kind of speaking of that, I, I have some questions here and we'll just kind of go with the flow of the conversation. Um but I do have some questions because I, I read some stuff that I thought was really cool that you said, and I want to jump into some of those things. But you have a great deal of experience in law school admissions world, right? So what would you say is or was one of the most difficult aspects of working in, in law school admissions? 
Yeah, so one of the most difficult aspects was, um, you know, and, and, and this is no mystery to the applicants, is like the, the quantitative measures, right? So the, the numbers, right? The LSAT, the GPA, and yeah. how like that, you know, can make or break in certain instances as, or determine what schools are, are, are going to be um, probable, possible, right? Or just completely right. out of reach. Right. Yeah. And so that was a struggle, right? To be kind of driven by the, um, you know, in admissions offices, we are given parameters. We're given like from these, you know, um, determinants from the deans, from the powers that be saying like, right. hey, you know, um, you know, we'd like a, you know, 160 this and the GPA, we'd like it to hit a target this. And so, you know, you're looking to craft a class around these competitive measures. And so that's hard. That said, the the numbers, there's statistical significance behind it. And you, when you, you want to set students up for success, you, you're using those statistical measures. And so the LSAT, a higher LSAT score is correlated to greater um, chance of achievement in your first year right. of law school. It's not one to one though, right? And so, right, right. Yeah, and so, so as you know, I, I keep thinking like, you know, we understand that on admissions committees, we know that there are human beings behind the numbers, and so it's a way, you know, that was a difficult thing as far as like not to get lost in a very one-dimensional process and remember that there's a human being behind this that's gonna bring all of these other intangibles, which is where the personal statement, the resume, and the right. other extra kind of, like I call them like the color, like all, you know, the rest of your narrative that's gonna come in and be like, you need me in your class. Because right, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, so it's interesting. I have uh, some questions, like I said, but what, we froze up just I have to kind of jump we know we know right um that the the uh, law school candidates need to demonstrate some of those academic disciplines and skills kind of like what you just said but we also as you said Christine we have to acknowledge that the numbers are not everything right, right. there's other factors right. that play right. a role in acceptance so I did uh, I did read a little bit about you and I read something that I thought was really great that you said and I want to dive in there uh, just a little bit so in one of your profiles you actually talked about working with prospective applicants on what you call the quantifiable and qualifiable components of the application right, right? right. and you said taking it from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional can you tell us a little bit about about that because I was like this lady's got it, you know, <laughs> I want to talk to her, right? So uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit more about that, if you will. Right, and so that that's a little bit of like that piece I was just talking about is that, you know, the application as a whole is, you know, and again, it's your first kind of contract as a prospective lawyer. And so in that contract, you're creating this narrative that, and your your goal is to show like, admit me right and these are all of my areas of strength and so right. I pocket them as like the quantifiable measures like everybody has to submit a test score and a GPA and those are the measures that again that statistical significance piece that data has been done you know there's there's metrics that admissions committees can use and and they're helpful right and not to be not to be all and end all but helpful and right, then right. there's the, the qualifiable measures, the qualities that an applicant is bringing as a person, as a human being. And right. these are, this is the living, breathing, you know, DNA. This is what you're going to be in the classroom every day. And, and so that's, that's, you know, immensely important because there is a lot of wiggle room with not, I shouldn't say a lot. There is wiggle room with the quantifiable measures, you know, when you, right. and, and, and so what schools are doing is they're going to have a lot, a large pool of candidates that are quantifiably admissible. Correct. And then it comes the qualifiable, the qualities of each applicant that's going to set you apart. And, you know, in, in that you want to show that I've taken advantage of opportunities that have been in front of me because schools are like, you know, we're offering all these great opportunities. We want to make sure that we're not enrolling, you know, really smart duds, <laughs> you know, for <laughs> to come in and then, you know, like, and then, you know, 
go in a library and that's, you know, that's their experience. Right, Some people right. That are going to be active learners that are going to take a part in the community that yeah. are going to, you know, like, and, and take advantage of all that we have to offer. So, you know, that's where the qualifiable measures will come in, it. where you can show those pieces of yourself and, you know, and, and I love that. Um, that kind of three. I, I tell you, I'll tell you, Christine, why I love that so much, what you're saying, because, um, you know, for those who may not score as high on the LSAT, right? I think it still gives a piece of a chance, if you will, right? So for a lot of our listeners, they get so caught up in the LSAT and the mm -hmm. score, the score, the score, um, as if there's no, there's nothing else about you that matters, but you've got this life experience, you've got these things, bring those to the table, right? Yeah. And let those be a part of your process too. I love that about you. And, and so, uh, you know, I got to ask some questions that people want to know, because that, that type of stuff is huge though. And I think when we talk about it in here, and this is where I love what Steve has done, he's kind of uh, segued into stuff like this. You know, it's not just about that score. It's about the admission process as a whole. So let's talk a little bit about admissions, right? Because <laughs> People, people want to know that too. And I, yes. and I hope that that part gave them some warm fuzzies in their heart. But um, we know about the, 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 the requirements, right? We got to have the LSAT score, some of those other things we just spoke about. But do law school admissions teams and committees really read every single law school application? And do they read them in their entirety? Yes. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I'll, I'm going to say for myself, yes. And yes. for the, the committee at VU Law, yes. So the, the Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid, um, every year, and you know, regardless of how long you were working there, every year right. made sure like we would we would sit down at the beginning of the season and you know and kind of talk about the upcoming season, talk about the, how the season ended, and and just be like, okay, we're getting new applicants. These applicants have right. invested time and money to submit their application right that right. so they they have essentially invested in us thoughtfully reading that application and Love so it. that is our directive is to That's thoughtfully amazing. read everything that is submitted and that that is like every email correspondence gets uploaded to an wow. application like all of those pieces we are reading everything um and taking all of that into account. So yeah, so speaking specifically of our uh, that institution where I work, that right. you know, I can that. but I know that my colleagues in other institutions are doing the same and feeling the same. You know, and, That's, and it's interesting, um, and thank you for that, because I think that, you know, again, that means every piece matters, guys, right? That everything mm -hmm. that you write, but you said something, and this is not on my paper, so I'm going to segue just a bit, but not, not, not too far. You said even email correspondence. So yeah. that means like every interaction that you make with a, a school that you're interested in counts towards something, yes? Yes, yes. And, and so when I was on the road um, representing BU um, at, at different events and, and such and doing question and answer, I like straight up always said that any correspondence that you send, treat right. it as if it is a professional document as part of your legal, your first legal contract, right? And so Love. it's it's not like, you know, you know, like, hey, what's up? Like that <laughs> Um, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, but very <hey>, cool. <laughs> you know, and so like that, that triggers a little something, you know, and, and that just like, oh, okay, you know, like this, this is a professional school and it's for a profession where, you know, kind of that gravitas is a piece right. of it. And so, right. you know, you, you want to present your best self. Um, and you know, and and so like I mean, we're like we're casual. Like I I love a good conversation just as much as anybody. I like you know love energy just as much as anybody. But you know, your email is going to be read by faculty. It's going to be Absolutely. read by the dean of admissions. You know, potentially even like the dean of the school might even come in and pull an application and read it. So you know, you want to present your best professional self. Absolutely. You know, and it's part of, we talk about it in uh, in the LSAT Unplugged, we talk about networking, right? And the importance yeah. of that email that yeah. you send out, right? The follow-up, yeah. 
uh, things yeah. like that. So I think those things are super important. And, and I'm glad we kind of hit on that because I think uh, part of the application process we sometimes don't consider, but every time you meet up with the uh, law school uh, admissions team at the, at the different symposiums and seminars, yeah. all those things count, right? So Thanks guys, keep that you. in mind. Every interaction is important. So that's awesome. So how, how many law school applications would you say the, that you read per week uh, and how much time is spent on each application? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it was, it was quite a bit. I mean, <laughs> excuse me. So we would set aside like actual reading days where you would just like hunker down, lock the door, like turn off the phone and that would be your kind of reading day. So, you know, each week we would read, we would try an average, um, about, you know, a hundred, 120. Um, and you know, and that it's, that actually is kind of on the lower end because we wanted to devote as much time as we could to each individual application and kind of make sure it was getting a really thoughtful read and not feel like we were rushing through. Um, you know, but that said, and you know, I've said this to um, prospective applicants um, and clients is that, you know, again, you want to make sure that all of your materials are on point, like everything that you're submitting is on point, that you're speaking clearly and concisely. You know, I one of the pieces of, uh, you know, personal statement that to me, like, you know, if you're the, the 50th application that I'm reading that day, like, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to do my best, but I'm also only human. And so if right. you're my 50th application, I want you to be clear and concise and on point. And if I have to, like, Spend a little extra on the brain. <laughs> have to circle back and get like, okay, what was the point here? Like, why am I reading this? Like, where are we going with this? And and how is it answering the question? That that's going to be like, oh, you know. Right. And, right. and so, reader go, oh, like, you know. Right. <laughs> that's where like, I always I hit with some perspective students that like just like clear, concise language, like hit your points, you know, get in, get out type of thing, you know, that type of, right. that type Absolutely. of That's, that's, and, and that's beautiful. So I think um, what's good to take away from that, right, is like, hey guys, you know, keep in mind as they're reading through the day, you could be the number one or you could be number 120, right? right. And so, yeah. We're, we're only human. So as I get to number 120, I still want to captivate the reader, right? So it's got to be good. Uh, you know, right. it's got to be good, but you got to, I like what you said, get in there, get out, right? Like, right, so, right. But, right, you could be one or 120. So we're going to take, we could be one, 120, one or 180, right. if you will, right? right. And it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that 120 needs to be like, I cured cancer yesterday and I'm right. working on like, I'm working on COVID tomorrow. Like that's not right. what we're looking for in 120. Right. We're just looking for like, this is why I want to go to law school. This, these are my, you know, characteristics and this is why you should admit me. Boom, you know, period, end of sentence. Right. Now, right? You know? I love right. it. I love it. You know, kind of talking about personal statements, um, the personal statements play a, a huge part, huge component uh, in revealing who the student is, who the student really is to the team. So what does it take, Christine? What does it take to stand out, you know, yeah. to, to, yeah. as a candidate? Yeah. Right, right. So, um, you know, just again, a little tidbit about me as a reader. Um, I read personal statements first, right? So I would get open an application and like get the first name, but then immediately jump into the personal statement because I want you know, my intent was to make this a person. And in the wow. personal statement, that's, that's to me is like the most color. That to me is answering the question, like, why am I reading this application? Why is this person applying to law school? And so- um, And you're so not that, doing, you're not, you need to go back and be on an admissions team. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I think I all of us it. are like, please go back and do that. <laughs> Well, see, now I can help you. Like now I feel like I can help people with it and, um, and do right. that. So, so yeah. So, you know, again, like, you know, that personal statement is, is an important narrative and, you know, and, and again, like, I don't want to put any more pressure on the personal statement because I know that writing about yourself and then also like, you know, some schools say like, you know, two pages, double spaced or like maximum four pages. And so we're trying to boil like, 
you know, two plus decades of life experience and like, how do I put that into two pages and, right. you know, and tell you everything without throwing the entire kitchen sink at you and making it like this big jungle mess. If I was five, you know, <laughs> then I turned six. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And so, you know, it's, it's answering like the, the personal statement should above all else answer the question, why do I want to go to law school and right. why now? Right. And so, you know, in doing that, without having it be a recitation of your resume or, you know, like going too in depth into things that are already answered in other parts of your application or will be answered in okay. other parts, you know, so it's, right. it's when I, you know, when I brainstorm with clients about personal statements, I literally interview them and just say, okay, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself and then. Why do you want to go to law school? And they right. tell me, you know, like in a conversation, why do you want to go to law school? And that usually ends up being the perfect personal statement. So think of it as, you know, I'm answering an interview question of why I want to go to law school and say it out loud as you're typing it up, you know, like and right. just do the stream of conscious for that first draft and then right. just go back and edit. Then, you know, you ask the question, like, you know, what makes the great, you know, and, and the perfect personal statement. I, you know, again, I read a lot and I read more good to great personal statements than I did right. bad personal okay. statements. So, yeah, so, you know, one of the, the pieces of it is that, you know, admissions committees are human, but they're also like with every application, they're right. like energized and like, okay, this one's going to be great. Like, why well, do you want to go to law school? Tell me everything type of thing. Right. You know, right. We, I would, I would bet if we did a study of like admissions committees, like they're all like totally into reality <laughs> TV and like, like, to, like, <laughs> into evil lives, like that everything. But yeah, like we want to know your story. And so, right. you know, and so, you know, the only thing that comes to mind for me, that's a really big thing about like what, makes a bad like a poor choice in a, in a personal right. statement is right. like if the admissions committee is the first person to proofread your personal statement that's a bad idea like you that's should be cool. proofreading the crap out of that thing and then right. going back in right. and proofreading right. it again and you know and and just clarity and conciseness of language is is like key totally key Clarity and concise. Guys, write it down, yeah. take it with you. Clarity and concise. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a question that we kind of got, and I, I have to throw it out there. Has there been a personal statement that has, like, surprised you? You got it, and you were like, whoa, uh, okay. <laughs> Everybody read this one, you know? <laughs> I, know I know. You know, like, I, it's, it's interesting. Like, I, I don't necessarily remember like like the specific personal statement but the personal statement as a piece of the entire narrative yes like we've had those applicants where we are like you know in committee discussions we're like oh yeah that's this one that everybody you know will have read and be right. like oh I remember that one too like you know etc and right. so and, and it's you know it's usually just again like people who have um you know again, not cured cancer, right? Obviously, right. not cured COVID, right? Obviously, because these things are, you know, still existing, but have done, you know, cool things and have a, have put together this clear narrative that has drawn people in and, and made people think like, yeah, like I want to be in the classroom with this guy. Like I want to, I want to hear this, you know, woman's take on, um, you know, intellectual property given, right, you know, right science background or whatever um I love you know, it. yeah so so there's there's been a lot there's again more good to great than than not so good to great that's good I think that's warming too to know like that that what we're getting when I say if you say 10,000 then they yeah. half of them were you know more than half were good right half. you know yeah, so more than half not, yeah. so that should give some warm fuzzies guys just write your story right tell a little right. about about who you are and why do you want to go to law school it's not uh you know we say rocket science in some cases but you know it's a big it's a big take right because people know that this means a lot so they want that paper to slide across your desk and they're looking for that big wow you know I, mm -hmm. I you know uh climb Mount Kilimanjaro you're like really you know <laughs> you're like you're like 19 you know like how did you do that but you know <laughs> 
<laughs> you got more life experience than me. But uh, I love that. And But I love the other part that you said, Christine, about when you read it, you think about, I want to be in school with that person, right? I want that person's take. I think that's a beautiful way to think about it. So as you're crafting those statements, think about, you know, what's going to make someone say, hey, I want to sit down next to Michonne and be in school with her, right? Mm -hmm. I remember I uh, went, Christine, to a torts class and because uh, I'm like, I'm like really trying to get lost. So I went to this torts class and I'm sitting in the back and I'm like, oh my gosh, they were talking about something dealing with the fires and well, whose fault is it? And I'm like, I'm a homeowner, you know, I'm a non-traditional mm -hmm. student. I'm I'm on, you know, almost, almost I'm on, I'm not gonna tell you, but I'm almost this age and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm a little older. So I'm like, I'm a homeowner, you know, I know what that feels like, but I was in the class with some, some younger people and they were like, you know, but doesn't insurance pay for that? And I'm like, no, you know, <laughs> no. So I thought about, I, you know, and I started thinking about that laughing to myself, but guys think about those experiences and those opportunities and what you would bring to the school. I think that's great to know that that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Let's kind of switch gears and talk a little bit about diversity statements too because i think those are just as important right um so yeah. with a, a prompt in, if you will that instructs students to describe how they would bring this perspective this very unique perspective to the study of law or even contribute to serving uh diverse populations right how would you advise an applicant who is maybe unsure about including a diversity statement whether or not they should or shouldn't Right. And and so my advice is if you have something more to say and you feel you can say it well and it will contribute to your narrative, right? Like as you said perfectly, like your story, um, right. then I think it's an opportunity that that you should give it a shot and see, you know, see what you can come up with in that. Right. If you feel that your personal statement has hit the mark and that's your story. And it's yeah. in a story, and again, that clear, concise, and compelling story. Then, then don't feel compelled to write additional pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, again, like when I when I was mentioned that you know when I brainstorm with clients, usually in that brainstorming session, we'll talk. Like I'll ask the question, "Why do you want to go to law school?" And I'll I'll get some really good information. And in that information, I will think like, "Okay, this." These are the answering the question of why I want to go to law school. But then there's all these other little nuggets, like let's yeah. explore some of these other nuggets. And so then it, it can be, you know, like, um, you know, I wanted to go to law school, you know, because of all of these reasons. And then it was reinforced when I, you know, took this class or took this internship or did this project or because of this other aspect of myself right. that right. necessarily why I want to go to law school, but it informs who I am and what I'm bringing to the table. And so that should be separated out from this original narrative and then go to town on that secondary piece. Because again, you know, it, if you have more to say, don't feel you need to jam it into the personal statement and muddy that statement. Feel free to use the diversity statement. Follow prompts, you know, again, like answer questions as they're asked. Um, some schools give more of a like an optional essay type of thing. Right. Like, if you have more to say, say it here type of thing. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I say if you have more to say, say it. And, say it. and again, you know, same kind of parameters as we talked about with the personal statement, proofread it, you know, don't rush through it, give it the right, same right. amount of attention as you're giving all other aspects of the application. Um, but I yeah, can. yeah, I mean, it's, but it's hard, like we, it, because when given that opportunity, if you're struggling to figure uh -huh. out what else you want to say, I I say don't worry about it. That right. you know, if it's if it's struggle and you're gonna feel like you're just gonna write air, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> that's not gonna add. To don't force it. Story. Right. Exactly. Don't force it. And uh, now, Christine, I noticed you didn't say much about like like who should write a diversity statement, right? Because that, and that's a question that comes up, you know, hey, I don't identify with the LGBTQ community, right? I'm not a my in a minority group. But that's not that's not all diversity is huge, right? So I think some people get uh, a little bit uh, squeamish, if you will, about writing a diversity statement because they think I'm not I'm not diverse. But I, I, I imagine the law schools think the same way I do. Diversity is huge. It's a plethora of things. It's not just yeah. race, religion, right? Sexual right. orientation, etc. Right, exactly. I mean, diversity of thought is one of the big pieces yeah. too. Like, 
everybody and like what you were talking about too like you know coming from a diversity of perspective of like i'm sitting in a classroom we're talking insurance none of these kids owned <laughs> anything that you know like where they had to read the fine print to realize that like if i put in a claim here they're gonna be like oh that's not <laughs> <laughs> like, that's an out-of-pocket expense <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So diversity of experience in that, like, I'm, you know, I'm coming from this from, with like a little bit more work experience, a little bit more life experience, you know, those types Absolutely. of things. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And so guys, I hope that opens your mind up a little bit when you're thinking about, should I write a diversity statement? You know, like Ms. Christine told us, like, think about it. Is there more that I have to say? But also diversity is huge, right? Mm-hmm. So don't just narrow, narrow yourself in there. Uh, let's switch gears. I'd be remiss not to talk about the LSAT, right? We got to yep. do it. Just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> we brought it up a little bit before, but um, you know, what what do let's just dive right in we know the lsat score is huge a uh, huge part we talked a little bit though about those quantifiables versus those qualifiables but what do schools really think about multiple lsat scores so you know i'm on number number three number four of this thing and i'm just trying to get it a little higher what when when you look at that application is there any thought that goes into that um my thought was just like oh this poor person you know had to, you know, put themselves through that <laughs> four times, you know, like, oh, but, you know, we, we looked at everything, right? I mean, like, as we talked about before, like, we read every piece of the application, so we're going to look at all four scores, we're going to read all four written submissions from all right. four tests, um, so, um, so, yeah, I mean, what our policy at, at BU and, and largely for most schools is that we're going to assess you based on your best work, right? Yeah. So we're going to see all of the other work, but we're going to assess based on the best day. And so, you know, your best day is your best day. And if that was on your second try, your fourth try, you know, it's it's going to be there. You know, one of the one of the pieces of you know large. Um, numbers of tries is that, you know, it's a, kind of the law of diminishing returns is that you're not, you're going to kind of hit a set point maybe. And, and so, um, you know, that quest for the highest, you know, ever, or making really large jumps after your, you know, after that kind of initial one, after that initial test, like make an assessment of like how you felt on that day. Like, oh, I had a head cold, like there was noises, there was construction, like there were other things, or, I sought more resources for the second one, you know, like a change in your study habits and what you did and who you sought help from, et cetera. Um, you know, that's where kind of more mark, I've seen more market change happen. Right. Um, so, so yeah, but again, that's, you know, more of my own personal kind of like feeling bad for people <laughs> having to take it a ton of time. <laughs> but, you know, if you take it four times, you took it four times and that's, you know, we're still going to assess based on the highest score. Right, your best day. No, I, I, and that's the that's the thing, right? And and I've been, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. This LSAT is 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 whoa, right? And mm-hmm. I, I'm in the military, uh, and I've taken some tests. This one here, I tell people about it, and I'm like, we can do anything in the military, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna throw this LSAT at you. I guarantee you'll struggle. <laughs> I guarantee you'll struggle, right? It's just a different type of test, you know. So a lot of people when they jump in, they're like, what is this? Um, and that coupled with the application process and admission and all this, different, this is a whole undertaking, right? So it's great mm-hmm. to have people that say like, hey, guys, we recognize this part of you and this part of you and all of these things make this application uh, strong. You know, so you have the LSAT score. Another part is GPAs, right? Mm-hmm. What, where do where do those fall in line, you know? Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, I was always asked the question, what's more important, the LSAT or the GPA? Um, and, you know, uh, in, you know, prior to the GRE being, um, you know, a- available, the right. LSAT to me was kind of like, you know, the level playing field, and there was a lot of data on that. But I always thought that the GPA was more of your day to day, like in the classroom, more of how you performed as a student. And so, um, you know, I always thought that the GPA was was kind of yeah, like that's the kicker. Like a, a you know a solid GPA shows that you show up, you know, every class, every day, and do the work. Um, and 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 for me, that's what we're looking for in the classroom is we're looking for the person to show up, you know, do the work, be successful. Um, right. Yeah. So the GPA is important, and that's you know I, I've I 
again, I, 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 you know, I'm hesitant to like put a ton of pressure on these quantifiables, but at the same time, you know, it opens doors. And so there's opportunity to be had with, with higher scores. Um, and that, that's not to say that if you had a rough semester or you had, you know, blips in your transcript, that's going to be the death you know, of, of an application, that's where a GPA addendum can come in and you can say, again, clearly and concisely, you know, not leveling the excuses, but just clearly and concisely, like my sophomore year, you'll all see a couple of courses where I didn't, you know, perform to my best ability, you know, right. I outside, um, you know, issues that have since been resolved, as you'll see in my other, you know, grades. Yeah rebound and blah, 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 you know, like, so there, you know, you're, you never want to have an admissions committee reader ask the question why and not have it answered in your words. And so that would be the instance is like on a transcript, I would look through and be like, oh, I wonder what happened sophomore year or like winter session, you know, in, in 2019, like, I wonder what that was about. And then right. look in an addendum and have the person say like, oh, I was working a full-time job during that semester and right. was able to, or like I was president of this club and, you know, we were putting on this really big, um, you know, volunteer function. And, you know, and that took a lot of my time during winter session, right. like, oh, okay, you know, like I can see how that would have interfered here. And then, and then say how you've addressed it, say the changes okay. that you made in order to then say like, okay, this totally isn't going to happen while I'm in law school. Cause I figure out how to balance things. Love that. I love that. So, you know, and I think that's a huge takeaway, right? So guys, first off, when you're reading it, you know, you know, I think we have to be honest with ourselves. Hey, this, this part of my life wasn't really the best part, right? I got a D here, or, you know, maybe I failed a class or I dropped a class or did something like that. Don't be afraid. And I, you know, like you said, Christine, we're not using excuses, but just tell the, tell the truth. Right. right? This is, this is what was going on in my life during that time, but this is what I did. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. This is what I did. And you won't see that behavior from me or you won't see these types of actions here. I think that's a, gr a good method to take, take a look and say, hey, I need to write this up. So that takes some honesty with ourselves, folks. Hey, this right. probably wasn't my best time of life. And that's OK. So, that's okay. you know, I think that's that's beautiful. Um, so uh, we talked LSATs, we talked GPAs. I do, I do have to talk letter of recommendations really quick with you too, just because I got you here. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of ask a, this is kind of a personal question. So I'm a, a non-traditional student, right? I've done the online school thing because you know I've been in the military for the last 18 years. Uh, so every school has been online, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when we talk about letters of recommendation, um, I, you know, I think we all kind of get a grasp of, and I, I'd love to get your thoughts on, you know, who's the best people, but that that one from those professors. I still struggle with, mm -hmm. with going back to these online classes where I truly didn't connect with professors and getting that letter. So I'm asking personally, like how much does that weigh? What do I, what's the steps in that uh, predicament, in that situation? Right. Yeah, and, and so I wanna tell you, um, again, speaking directly to you as this, yeah, exactly. <laughs> in this situation is that admissions committees understand right? Admissions committees understand that applicants um, with military background likely were taking some classes while deployed. So we're taking online and or, you know, in different spaces. And the second piece of that is that if you can get military references, those references rock. Like those references were solid references, like, and, and they like, they hit on all the marks of like, yeah, like this person can handle the rigors of like academics and law school and that type. So yeah, so so to now for the general kind of overall, like when recommendations, when schools are looking for letters and recommendations, often they will say an academic letter is preferred. Right? right. It's rare that they say like it is absolutely 100% required because much like like you're talking about in your instant in your circumstance, it's difficult to kind of track down someone that you literally have only emailed or chatted with, um, you know, online. But then um, people who are applying who have been out of school for 10 years, it's difficult to right. go back and say like, hey, you remember me from sophomore <laughs> year when I was like one of 150 people in your class? Right. 
you know, 13 years ago. Um, so yeah, so professional recommendations are, are good. All of that said, if you are currently um, in, in college, um, you know, and have access to professors right now, um, right. Yeah. schools are going to ask the question why you didn't get an academic letter of reference, right? right. Yeah. You're just getting a recommendation from an internship um, advisor or another advisor. And so if you're currently in undergraduate in a brick and mortar under, which, which given COVID, there's gonna be some flexibility, right? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So generally in the, like, the brick and mortar type of educational setting, if you're an undergraduate applying directly to law school, a letter of reference from um, a professor um, or teaching assistant, or, you know, someone that knows you in the classroom is um, advisable. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and that's good. And that's great. See, that's the so that's one of them. Say we get two. Who does that other letter come from, Christine? Like, yeah. So, rank them. Who's that person? <laughs> right, 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 right. So, um, so a funny story about that. I. Um, we did have an applicant years ago now when um, our current president was the vice president. Um, we had a letter of recommendation from the then vice president, um, okay. you know, on beautiful letterhead, et cetera. And uh, that was cool, right? <laughs> but, you know, like it didn't actually hold as much weight as like someone who like volunteered for an organization for five years and like they're you know, their supervisor through the, in the organization wrote this like, you know, two page, like, like testimonial to like how awesome this person is. Like, right. that, you know, I didn't know who that person was, but that was a fantastic letter of recommendation. I thought the, you know, the vice president recommendation was cool. And just kind of like looking at it was like, wow, we, like, awesome. But you know, like, does it, that's not necessary. Like that, you know, right. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be from like this like crazy seal and high office. Just someone that really knows you well and knows you right. either right. like in a professional setting, an academic setting, can speak to your ability to um, communicate clearly, think exactly. critically, um, you know, work collaboratively, like all of those, yeah. those pieces. Yeah. I love that. So guys, the takeaway there, Christine just gave you some jewels there. Don't go try to meet the president of Edison. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Don't stop it now. Stop it yeah. now. Right. Because those, those letters, and I think that's the thought, right? You know, oh, I'm not going to get in law school because I don't know this person or this person. Who knows you? Right. Who knows you? And who can yeah. speak to you? And that's who we're looking for. Right. So I think that's a, that's a jewel to take away for sure. Um, so Last part I'm going to ask about, we're at the 442, um, speaking to the students that are nervous to reach out to admissions office, yeah. uh, offices, how would you advise students who uh, need additional information or help? How would you say, reach out? Like, what would be their, I know I, to me, I would just say do it, but you know, for somebody who may, who may be a little nervous or questioning, do I, do I reach out to this school? Do I reach, reach out to this admissions committee and say hello, you know, what, right. what's the best there? Well, there's like people like me on the other end of the phone or the other end of the email. Like we love talking to you. Like we, I mean, like we're in this industry of education and higher education to serve you, right? right. We want to answer your questions. We want to be helpful. We want you to understand the process as best you can and have right. all the questions answered. And so, so yeah, I say, you know, if you have a question, reach out. They are dying to hear from you. Absolutely. hundred percent. And there's, you know, every admissions office, you know, they have people like, you know, assistant directors, associate directors that are answering the phones and, and, right. you know, and, and they can put you in touch with current students. They can put you in touch with alumni. Like they can be your like, conduit to getting all of these really great pieces of information. Absolutely. You are making a huge investment of time and money, huge investment. You should be kicking tires, doing test drives. You should be like asking all sorts of questions. Definitely. Absolutely. I love that. And I think, uh, you know, Christine, like I, I tell people all the time, like just, just say hello, send the email, right? Ask the question, sit in on a class if they're offering it. But I, I, what, I, what I have to say is do the work. 
right? Yeah. Do the work to meet someone, to say hello. Do Take the time out to send that email and keep up with who you've contacted and reached out to. To me, this is a game of, yes, there's the LSAT, you know, yes, there's GPAs, but this is a part of when you see Michelle Montgomery cross your desk, you're like, I know Michelle. You know, yeah. I know Michonne. And that's a beautiful feeling. It doesn't have to be the president of the school, guys. This could yeah. be a student. This could be, you know, and I and I want to just jump back really quickly because I didn't ask this one question, but um, how many people make up an admission committee and like who are they usually made up of? And and that'll kind of be my 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 closer there for us, and then we'll do some final thoughts. Yeah, that's a great question. And it varies from school to school. Um, mm -hmm. so again, my my personal experience is um, you know, committees are made up of um, administrators, like um, admissions professionals. Sometimes they pull in in certain instances. Um, like we had people that were applying for specific public interest scholarships. And so we pull in the um, the director of public service and, you know, and other kind of you know, eyes and ears um, from different departments. And then faculty, faculty were on our committee. And so, um, you know, faculty were reading applications as well. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I think it's great. So you guys, you know, it could, it could be a whole host of people, right? We, yeah, we never, right. We never yep. really know, right? So just, just get involved. If you know there's some schools you're interested in, some place you want to go, don't be afraid to just go out there, take a visit. And everyone's doing these virtual visits now. Jump mm -hmm. on a virtual visit, ask some questions, right? Be a present face. And I think that's a beautiful way to just kind of start approaching this thing. So that's wonderful. I got to ask this last question, and here we go. We're going to close it out with this. If you had one thing, one thing to share with prospective applicants, what would that thing be? Oh my goodness, one thing. <laughs> one, Ooh, thing. one thing. Oh, you know, like the first thing that comes to mind is proofread, 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 right? <laughs> like just, you know, make, just make sure your full application, you know, from front to back is you've read it through, it is telling your story, like Michelle, like how you said that, like tell your story, like tell your story and, and just make sure like it's it's proofread and, and just clear and just everything you want it to be as you're presenting yourself to, um, you know, to the committee. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's awesome. So I have to thank you so much for your time oh, today. No, thank uh, you. I mean, this was phenomenal. I appreciate the conversation and, and, and the time. Um, is there a way if people wanted to reach out to you that they could? Absolutely. So um, christine.carr at accepted.com. That is my um, email address at accepted. And I take all sorts of questions. Um, about all things law school admissions and, and all of that. So, um, and we do free consultations. So, you know, you need not purchase anything upfront. You can, um, we can talk about like what, um, what questions you have. Sometimes they're just like quick one-offs that I'm, ha I'm happy to do, um, but feel free to reach out. Absolutely. And Michelle, like, this was such a pleasure. You have such a good energy. Um, like what a, what a, you know, yay. That Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.